All right, vlogging time. What's going on guys? I'm Mick LaGrange and today we're talking about five items that will instantly make you a better writer of TV news scripts. So you may or may not recognize me and odds are you don't recognize me, but I'm a local TV anchor. I've been doing this for the better part of a decade, traveling back and forth across the country doing this, and I've learned a little bit about writing TV news scripts. And before we get into that, let's just talk about what TV news scripts are. If you're new to this kind of industry, you may not know, but writing for TV is much different than writing for a magazine or a newspaper or an academic journal or an essay at school. It's much different from that. There are some elements of both, but there are certain rules and guidelines to writing for TV that are very important to follow. And there's a lot of things we could discuss in this video today, but I'm just keeping it to five. I feel like five is a good number to start off with. There's probably like 13, 20, 37, a, a lot of them we could discuss. We're not gonna get to all of those today because that would just, that, we could go on for hours about this. But if you wanna talk about it more in the comment section, by all means, go ahead and do that. Maybe we'll talk about this again in a later video discussing some other items. But these are the five that I see very often from new producers, from new reporters, people who haven't had a lot of practice and experience writing for TV just yet. These are things we're taught in journalism school, but sometimes you know the, the fundamentals get lost a little bit, especially if you're in a rush, if you don't have, again, that kind of experience knowing uh, this is how you're supposed to write on a regular basis for scripts. And as an anchor, I find myself changing a lot of these things that I get from producers and reporters, which is my job. But uh, I think if you put these into practice more, you'll find that your writing becomes really concise. It cuts down time, which is something we're always looking for. And uh, everybody around you is gonna really appreciate it because we're not gonna be making all these changes all the time. So the first item would be to just write more concisely, eliminating certain words that you maybe don't need. Now these are words maybe that we use in everyday conversations with people, which is something you're taught in journalism school. You wanna write like how you talk to people, but sometimes words get in the way that just aren't necessary. Some of these words that come to mind are the word that, or help, or even the word the sometimes uh, can get in the way a little bit. I know these are short words. These are just three, four letter words but they do add up over the course of a newscast. If you're uh, constantly putting the word that in there or help, it can take away from what we're trying to get to at the end of a newscast. You might eliminate an entire 30 to 40 second story. Uh, the producer might have to float it because we've been adding all these other words to other scripts. So an example of the word that would be if you're writing a sentence that you say, she went to the store that she liked. You could keep it that way or you could say, she went to the store she liked. Another example is the word help that I mentioned. They're raising money to help end cancer. Or it could be they're raising money to end cancer. Again, these are just short words that you're eliminating and it's just a short amount of time that they take up. But when you get rid of them, it really does add up over the course of a newscast. Number four on our list is the phrase speaking out. Now this is a phrase that just drives me crazy. I know I'm not alone on this. Speaking out is something that I see a lot of new producers, a lot of new reporters using because I think they're supposed to. Uh, a mom is speaking out tonight about the school board's decision to defund such and such program. You don't need to say she's speaking out. We already know that she's saying something. I'm speaking out right now. You know, I'm speaking out loud. You already know that. I don't have to tell you, hey, I'm speaking out right now, and these are my thoughts. Again, we're talking about time for a newscast and cutting out words like that and help. Speaking out, that's even more time that you're cutting out by getting rid of that term. No one says that in a normal conversation. If you do say that in your normal conversation, I'd love to meet you because I've yet to meet anybody who does that. Number three on our list is eliminating police speak. Now, what is police speak? Police are trained to talk in a certain way to the media that's, um, you know, it, it's very jargon filled. It doesn't make sense to use their phrasing on our air because again, you don't really use police speak in your normal conversations with people in the real world. One brief example of this would be uh, police say that the victim was transported to the hospital. You would never say anybody's transported to the hospital. You would say somebody's been taken to the hospital. You know, that's pretty much the one way I can think of saying it in everyday language. Another big one that just drives people crazy, including myself, is the phrase fled on foot. Police will use fled on foot to say somebody ran from them and they're looking for them. They didn't flee in a vehicle, you know, they didn't flee in a plane or a helicopter, they fled on foot. We would never say that in broadcast or even in regular life. You would say to your friend or whoever you're talking to, yeah, the guy ran away from the police. He, he ran from the police. 
police. You know, you say he ran away. He ran from police and they can't find him and they're, they're looking for him. Another part of using police speak uh, that I don't like, it makes us look lazy. Uh, we get press releases from the police talking about whatever happened, whatever investigation they're on, and they'll use those terms and a lot of times people will copy and paste that into scripts and that just makes us look lazy. It makes us look like we're not actually writing it because we aren't. We're just using the terms that the police gave us. So please, get rid of police speak. Number two on our list is writing an active voice. This is like day one stuff in journalism school, especially for TV broadcast. You never really use the past tense of verbs when you're talking about something that's going on right now. The mayor says there's a project coming on. The police say this is a suspect. It's never the police said, it's never the mayor said. That's how you would write for a newspaper or a magazine, an online publication. Yeah, you use the past tense form of uh, the voice. And that's not to say that you never use past tense in television broadcast news because you do. Sometimes you have to say, well, the bill became law last month. And you give us some context down the script a little ways. The mayor announced this was going to happen last year. By all means, go ahead and use that because that's what makes sense. But if you're talking about something that's active, something that's going on right now, something that somebody is saying, something that somebody is voicing, active voice says, not said. And number one on our list, this thing just drives me insane. Write in complete sentences, complete thoughts when you're making your scripts. I see a lot of producers eliminating words like is or are. Basic parts of sentence structure in the English language, we're not using them in our scripts and they just come out sounding bizarre and strange and maybe the thought gets across to the viewer, but it, again, I said toward the beginning of this video that you want to write like how you would talk in normal life and you would never exclude the words is or are. It's going to be part of what you're saying to somebody else, so it should be part of your script as well. I'll give you an example. The script says, take a look at this video, a freight train barreling toward a stuck tractor trailer in Cleveland County plowing into its side. Now, you can kind of get that, but that sentence just doesn't make a lot of sense. It's very convoluted. It excludes the words is and are, and it's got the location just kind of thrown in there. And maybe that would make sense to someone, but there is an easier way to do this, and there's a better way to do this. And I'll tell you what I did with this. I wrote, take a look at this video. This is in Cleveland County. A freight train is barreling toward a stuck tractor trailer and it plows into its side. Now, you know, I think that makes a lot more sense. We're saying, take a look at this video still. This is in Cleveland County. Went ahead and put the location in there. You can debate about where you put locations in, but I think it makes more sense to have that first thought. Hey, this is in Cleveland County. And now this is what's happening. And instead of saying a freight train barreling toward a stuck tractor trailer, I say a freight train is barreling toward a stuck tractor trailer and it plows into its side rather than plowing into its side. You would say the words and and is and are and you would break up your thoughts a little bit to have a complete sentence that stands alone and makes sense. And you know, restructuring that sentence might seem like nitpicking to some people, but you really gotta ask yourself, does that sentence by itself make sense standing alone? If I read that, by itself, would you understand what I'm saying? And you might, but you might not get there as quickly as you would like that person to get there. And one more tip for you as well. After you write the script, kind of read it out loud to yourself. Read it and see if it makes sense when you're saying it yourself out loud. You don't have to say it for the whole newsroom to hear, but just kind of, oh yeah, okay, okay. Like we read it off the screen, make sure that it sounds like something that makes sense before you send it off. Because a lot of times we write things down, we think it makes sense, in our mind, but then when somebody's reading it out loud, it makes no sense at all. It can be very frustrating. So of course, again, there are all sorts of other aspects to news writing that goes into broadcast, especially that we didn't talk about in this. If you'd like to talk about that more with me, I'd be happy to do so. Leave that in the comment section below. Might make another video like this in the future. Again, this is the first vlog I've ever done. Hoping to do a lot more with these, probably more news related, uh, production related, who knows, sports related, food related, I don't know. This is gonna be a fun ship to be a part of though, I promise you that. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button down there, I'd really appreciate it. I don't really know how to end this, so uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm gonna give it the old Peter McKinnon.